Hey all, Board Game Rants, where we'll find everything solo tabletop gaming and more. And we're going to go over today Imperium, Classics, and Legends from a solo perspective standpoint. Of course, a little bit on the game and what I'm thinking about on the other side. So we got Imperium Classics there on the left, Imperium Legends on the right. They're basically one and the same. I think the eight factions in here are a little more straightforward supposedly in the eight factions over there. So, but very, both standalone games and they're essentially identical the way they play. You just get more factions, you get double the factions. So what this is, is a civilization game, but it's a tableau deck building game, I guess is uh, maybe the best way to explain it. So up here, like deck builders, you have sort of your, your buy area. And so you've got, uh, different types of, of cards. You got the region cards, civilized, uncivilized, and you got kind of a, a hodgepodge of cards here. And so these are available. Over here, you got the unrest cards. If ever this runs out, it triggers end game. There's some other end game triggers as well. Unrest cards are bad. Those get in your hand. They just, they just, they just gunk it up. They're cards you don't want. And rather than buying cards in this game, you actually there's, sort of, well, there's, there's a lot of different ways to get cards, but there's, you know, acquire, you can acquire, or you can break through. Now, if you acquire a card, you basically got to take what you, what you got here. I mean, you just got to, you get what you get. And you also get, unfortunately, many of these cards come with an unrest card under them. So, so that's yucky. But if you break through for a card, you can, you can take the card without taking the unrest. So the breakthrough is a, is a stronger purchase power. Oftentimes too, rather than just taking what's here, if you don't like it, you can, you can draw and uh and see and kind of draw randomly and hopefully get a better type of card whatever you're looking for if you don't see it in the market you can kind of do a blind draw so you're not really buying cards you're taking certain types of actions to 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 get these cards kind of almost said acquire but acquire is one of the ways <laughs> you can break through for a card too anyway so uh but there are different types of resources in the game there's progress tokens there's population tokens and material tokens so there are uh, stuff that that you can you can get cards some of these will end up with a lot of them will end up with progress tokens on them making them maybe a little more attractive progress tokens are worth victory points at the end of the game and you can also use them as wild basically as as the other types of resources and down here this is you know one two three four five and these five cards here represent the ai and i'll kind of go over that here in a second but so for this deck building game, there's your, your buy area. Over here is, is my personal area where my civilization's represented. And then over here on the right, you've got the AI area where its civilization is, is represented. And so uh, my starting deck of cards here, basically you're gonna go uh, through your deck and as you go through your deck and, and, and it empties and everything ends up over in the discard, then you're going to get to add first from uh, this, your nation deck. And then eventually, once this is gone, you'll be adding to from your development pile here. These cards just kind of come free every time you empty your deck. And these cards, you actually have to spend resources to, to purchase these guys here. And your civilization is going to start in a barbarian state with, uh, you know, typically you're gonna have three actions. So, so these tokens represent your three actions. And then you've got some exhaust ability. Some of these cards have an exhaust ability on them. I'm looking for one here. So like if this card was, was, in your, was, was played in your tableau, you could put an, uh, an exhaust token on it and take that exhaust ability. And, uh, but again, everybody pretty much gets three actions each, <clears throat> each of your turns. And once you get through your nation deck, you will be flipping this over and becoming from barbarian to empire and you're on your way so this is uh sort of my <clears throat> my personal area and then out here is going to be the tableau building area where i will take my cards and and be playing them <clears throat> cards that have the little pin symbol will end up staying out there cards that don't have the little pin symbol i'll end up discarding uh, there's ways to get unrest, lots of different ways to get unrest cards. Unrest does, does you no good, except for clutters up your deck. You don't want them, and they're worth negative points at the end of the game. Definitely don't want those. So on your turn, you'll be <clears throat> spending an action to do something, and most of the time that is to, to play a card. And there's other stuff you can do, too. You can, you can use that, you know, use your turn. You just don't have anything in your hand. You can use your turn to kind of just generically get a card. 
Um, if you can also use your turn, if you're just loaded with unrest, you can use your whole turn to basically just get rid of all the unrest in your hand. But for the most part, you're just going to be using your three actions and, and playing the cards in your hand. And then back and forth, you'll go. Your tableau is going to build up here, your civilization, if you will. And then over here, the AI, the way the AI runs is once AI is turned, <clears throat> there's different difficulty levels too. But on normal difficulty, if you will, you'll roll the die. It'll tell you which card to not activate. So from left to right, the AI is basically going to flip over a card. And then based on its the faction you're playing, they're all run by these sheets. Well, I printed these sheets. They're on the back of the rule book. But if you print them off, <clears throat> playing the Utopians. But over here, you've got you've got them all. The Arthurians, the Olmecs, you've got, you know, I printed all of them off just because it's easier than trying to thumb through a rule book each time. But the Utopians, what will happen is... And, and they all run very similar. <clears throat> you know, you'll flip over a card. You'll kind of look at what type of card. You won't really pay attention to any of the stuff. You'll just look at what type of card it is. And then you'll match it up over here. And then when you find the, the first match, you just look to the right and it'll tell you what to do. And then you'll go on to the next card. <clears throat> and you'll look at the type of card it is. You know, this has got a little scroll on it. So I'll activate this scroll icon here and discard the top two cards. Blah, blah, blah. So very straightforward, very easy to run the AI, and then when it sits, once it's in this case, because it rolled at five, it would activate all these cards, then it would throw a progress token on the card above it, that's why it has these, you have these here where they're at, throw the progress card up there, slides this over, and then it draws back up to five cards out there with its deck, and then it'll go through its deck, very similar to the way you would go through your deck, so, and then it would be my turn again. But actually, too, there's also another little, little step in there. After I've taken my turn and the AI is taking this turn, there's a solstice phase at the end of each round, if you will. And that's where these little solstice icons come into play. And, and depending on the cards you out there, you, you have to you have to do your, your solstice actions. And then you do it again and you do it again and you do it again until... <clears throat> Basically, till you run out of stuff, till you run out of, you know, your cards and all your cards up here that are part of your your deck. Uh, if you run out of those, um, the AI oftentimes, the Utopians work very differently, but usually it, once the AI is run out of its stuff, that'll trigger endgame. Again, if the unrest cards ever run out, that triggers endgame. If this big old stack up here runs out, that triggers endgame. If, if these cards over here run out, the, the purple ones there, that triggers endgame. A lot of different ways to, to trigger the end game. Uh, now, if, if the unrest, if you're playing solo and the unrest cards ever are gone, uh, you, you just lose. When you're playing multiplayer, you don't just lose. You just score the game a little differently. But the unrest cards are basically, that's, that, that, that's a lose. You lose the game if those ever if that stack ever runs out. So there's a, a quick and dirty there of the game, Imperium Classics and Imperium Legends. And let's talk a little bit more about this one. Quick spoiler alert. This is my favorite game of 2021 so far. We're halfway through the year, but this is my favorite game to this point. Breaking it down. Set up and, and tear down. Now, that's that's a good 10 to 15 minutes that, that you're looking at. It's uh, There's a lot of cards to kind of put for you and set up and for the AI to set up and for the out there in the main area to set up. And, and then in between games, it takes about as long too. Now, if you just swap the factions when you go from game to game, like you're playing this faction, the AI is playing that faction, game over, then you just whoop, swap, save a little bit of time, but it's still, there's a lot to kind of separate and put all back together again. So so 10 plus minutes, at least with the, the setup and then the teardown, it's got great slots that come with the game, all organized, beautifully done on the bottom of the board game. I think it's like, got the names of the different factions and where you put all and then the, and then the insert the clear insert fits on top of that so that you can see right where to organize everything so that's 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 great very nice table space easily on a on a standard coffee table room to spare on a three by three table length of play a little long uh, a good 90 minutes hour and a half for this game and I there's some games that go two hours you know just it just depends on what triggers the game if if you run out of unrest cards, that, uh, that's that's the quickest game I've had. And I've only, has uh, it happened once or twice when I've played. But anyway, you, you immediately lose. You know, I took a chance, you know, it's, oh, there's, there's ways you can totally mitigate it. You, you, so that's why I feel like it's pretty rare that you lose that way, but that makes for a quick game. But if it goes the, the length 
then then you're looking at 90 plus minutes i i think so uh, so a little longer than i usually like but this game is good enough then i was fine with it the components and, and the value for the clones well <clears throat> the components are I mean, they were fine this was like a 40 dollar game for each one so so you know classics 40 dollars legends 40 dollars and i feel you know that was fine that was fine there's a lot of you know the three punch boards or so there's there's a lot of chits and stuff and and things to move around uh and there's there's quite a few cars and i feel like just it all looks great the the decorations on the cars the illustrations it looks nice and out, especially on the table uh the chits are you know average i guess but a couple of things you know one the cards are not all the same size you know when you're shuffling them up they're not you can feel it you can feel the difference and that I, I don't know it's just very annoying i mean if you sleeve everything up and i haven't sleeved everything up that'll fix it but you shouldn't have to do that the card should be the same size that was weird and i really wish that it came with separate solo ai charts those things that i had to print up they are in the back of and there's two rule books they are in the back of the solo rule book but you know too annoying to try and keep one open uh, and and they're missing something too they're missing a you know, pretty important step here and well anyway and i'll get to that too but really wish there was some ah, that's that's really maybe going over the top for us solo players come on but it was david turgy and this is definitely a game <clears throat> it's so good solo it should have come with that i really wish it would have anyway but still really for 40 bucks not too bad especially with those those trays and the organization that just comes with the game that was pretty impressive thematically i think you can get into it thematically there's no real flavor text anywhere but it looks beautiful once you've got it all set out and you're doing things you're churning through your tableau and and, and you're churning through your deck and in that way you really feel like you're you're really kind of building something up and building something up and you're adding these cards that that are very unique to your faction you know mostly and and that's that's kind of the biggest way that the game has ended is i've gone through and gotten all my cards and uh and added them to my civilization and you go from barbaric to whatever empire or the blue side and <clears throat> your tableau though changes especially the regions i usually have two rows there's the top row that has pinned cards that give you a, just a variety of actions and abilities and stuff and the bottom row i usually have my regions which you can do all sorts of stuff with, you know, essentially garrison cards. You can tuck them under there. And well, anyway, that goes more on the mechanics and stuff I'll, I'll talk about in a second. But but ultimately, you, a lot of times you're going to take those back. It allows you to take this, you know, powerful action. And so your your tableau it really feels like it's evolving and stuff. So I, I, I felt like thematically this felt civilization building, even in just a, this deck building, tableau building game. Kind of pretty impressive. The rule books and i do mean rule books there's one for normal play and then one for solo play yeah this <laughs> i could have i feel like there's room for some improvement here you read the rule book you have no clue how the game plays you just i could not picture it i was reading it and it's sort of like you know it doesn't seem to involve there's a bajillion keywords but it's like okay fine you know i you get there's the just the mechanic the basic mechanics of play are fairly straightforward but when you when you read them you have no clue how it's going to feel playing and there's no examples anywhere there's nothing so there's just there's no example of play or even like you know this mechanic for example blah, 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 there's nothing like that so that felt like a big miss to me it, it really will help if you if you watch some videos on youtube to get a sense i didn't before i played it the first time and i played it two hands you know i played it one I, the, the the situation I was at, I could only play two rounds, basically back and forth, back and forth, and I put it away, and I only had the classics, um, Imperium Classic. Right, I put it I, before I even put that game away. I ordered Legends. I could just tell it was my kind of game, but there was no way to tell that by reading the rule book, and also too, the solo rule book. Uh, it, it, there's some stuff missing. I mean, there's like like what the AI does with an unrest card when it reveals it. It's like nowhere in the rule book. I mean, that's a pretty. It just seemed it was some weird stuff there's not a bunch of faq to look at but that was just there's some odd stuff i felt was overlooked and uh, so that's a little too bad so the rule book it's got everything in there but it's sort of like uh you know it's sort of like the so many rule books where i feel like it's like here's the rule book learn how to play and it just goes through a very friendly way and then and then there's the rule book that sort of when you want a reference here's the reference rule book there's a learn to play and then a reference i felt like it's, it's missing the learn how to play. <laughs> it's got the reference book, but it really needed to learn how to play book. Anyway, so rule books, 
the yeah but uh but they were you know the game's not difficult to pick up on mechanics fantastic the mechanics and the strategy of this game are all just magnificent it's just taken this this idea of a deck builder which i'm i'm just i'm kind of so bored about and I, I just keep trying deck builders and i keep not finding any that just do anything that really catches my fancy this totally does i mean just like the trash the idea of a trash mechanic you know usually your, your deck builders you always want to get rid of these garbage cards or the weak cards well the way you can do it here there's so many options you got when you play a region card oftentimes you can garrison it by you can so you can basically tuck a card under it and save it for later. So you can put it out of circulation, out of your deck, so you can revolve through your deck quicker. And you're really, you're revolving through your deck very, very fast, which is exciting. You're constantly adding, I mean, so it's like every turn, you're adding cards to your deck. And then you can get rid of them so fast. I mean, you can literally trash them. I mean, you always want to get rid of unrest cards. But there's other cards that, you know, it's like, I can't even use this yet because I'm my I'm not on the blue side. I'm, I'm still a barbarian. I'm not an empire yet. So there's certain cards you can only use as your civilization progresses. But you see them out in that buy area, so you snatch them, but you can't play them yet. So you can tuck them, you can garrison them. There's there's ways, you know, you can just discard them. There's ways you can put them in history, which is, which is another spot where it's not really trashed, but you, it's permanently gone, but you can still score it at the end of the game. Just fantastic ways of very creative ways to to trash a card and all and then when you're buying cards you can you have to have resources and there's there's three different well progress tokens you usually want to keep those are victory points but you can use them very versatile you can use them to get you the resources you need to purchase cards and and when you're purchasing cards you can there's basically two ways to do it you can either acquire a card which basically you have to take the card and if it has an unrest card under it you got to take that too and it goes right into your hand instead of like in your discard pile or whatever just immediately playable or you can break through for a card which if you don't really like what you see out there you can just blindly draw the type of card you're looking for or you can take a card out there without taking the unrest card so just fantastic plays on all of the mechanics that that i kind of you know maybe have seen in this deck building game but not in another one and then this one but not in another you know but it's taken like everything and, and beautifully orchestrated into this game and oh it's magnificent and there's a lot of strategy too with the different factions you really you know you're 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 built you you want to build a certain way so you get to experience the game and in like 16 different ways if you have both games ah oh, just just feels endless you know what what you can do with this game as far as and also too every ai faction or every faction can be played by the ai and every ai faction plays differently the solo design is just a masterpiece how david churchy managed to take this game and, and simplify the ai to make it very manageable and and yet involved enough to really you know be scoring some points and be taking some cards and and, and just do certain things that can still get in your way and but it's not overwhelming to run and each one just runs differently all the different factions have a, a different sheet or card or whatever you want to you know that you use to determine its actions and then it has a very thematic thing toned towards that faction and it's just fantastic david churchy just ugh, delivers in spades on this solo design for me and there's difficulty levels too. There's a bunch of difficulty. You can actually play this in kind of a campaign mode as well. So lots of different replayability, lots of different avenues to explore with all the different factions. And uh, I just, every time I, I finish this game, I'm kind of tidying them up. I'm like, okay, oh, well, maybe I should put this away and, and move on. But I'm like, you know, I mean, but yeah, just, I, have I even tried this faction? Well, but I wonder how, you know, it just, it leaves you, for wanting more every time I finish playing this game. It's like, well, maybe I should try this next time. So I find myself just never putting the dang thing away. Anyway, a little problematic when you like playing as many games as I do. This game is just, just stuck on my table. So that's it. That's uh, all I have to say about Imperium Classics and Legends. Thank you for watching. If this was helpful in any way, please uh, don't forget, if you wouldn't mind, just boop that like button. It does help circulate the video more, more people can see it, more people can learn about this game, and it certainly helps the channel. It's really easy to do. So, thank you. I'm Board Gamers. Until next time, I'm out.